A warm welcome once again to the newsroom here at the stories we're following at this time. The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, has announced an indefinite strike in response to the government's failure to meet their demands. The president of NAD, Emeka Oji, revealed that the strike will commence on Wednesday morning, July the 26th, 2023. The NAD NEC members held a meeting in Lagos on Tuesday where they collectively reached this decision. The federal government has said that there is no plan to reduce working days for employees of the federal civil service. Speaking on the issue with journalists in Abuja on the sidelines of a media party to commemorate the 2023 Civil Service Week, the head of the service of the Federation, Fulashade Yemieson, said there was no need for that because the Tunubu-led administration is working on palliatives that would sustain civil servants. She further said that salary of workers are being reviewed and that there will be an increase to cushion the impact of subsidy removal. The ruling All Progressives Congress has called on the Department of State Services and other security agencies in the country to investigate the claim made by the opposition People's Democratic Party that it followed an alleged attack on its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. The appeal is coming barely 24 hours after the spokesman for the PDP, Debo Olugwagba, raised an alarm that the Adamawa residence of Atiku was invaded by gunmen suspected to be members of the Boko Haram. Olugwagba added that the alleged sponsored attack was however foiled by men of the Adamawa State Police Command. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has directed banks to vacate a post-no-debit restriction placed on the bank accounts of 440 individuals and companies. The circular signed by Ian Burrell on behalf of the CBN Director of Banking Supervision on Tuesday also instructed banks to notify the concerned customers of the development. In 2021, CBN instructed banks to freeze the account of 18 companies ranging from Buru de Change, construction firms, investment companies, laundry and services and property companies. Joe Luis, the owner of Tottenham Hotspur football team, has been charged with interlight trading by United States prosecutors who alleged the billionaire shared stock tips with employees, friends and romantic partners. Prosecutors allege Louise passed on non-public information about companies including Marathi Therapeutics and Solid Bell Sciences. The 86-year-old British mogul faces 16 counts of securities fraud and three counts of conspiracy for alleged crimes carried out between 2013 and 2021. Spain have underlined their credentials as pre-tournament favourites after becoming one of the first teams to seal qualification for the Women's World Cup knockouts with a 5-0 win over Zambia in their second group seek encounter. Teresa Albelere opened the scoring on Wednesday, while Jennifer Hernonso and Alba de Rodondo both scored twice to give Spain their second victory which also showed Japan of last 16 qualification after the beat Costa Rica 2-0 earlier in the day. However, Spain's margin of victory means they now have a better goal difference and so just need a draw to finish in first place when the sides clash in Wellington. And that's it from the newsroom. Do join us at the top of the hour for more stories. I am Fola Shadi Ogurinde. Bye for now.